hey okay we're ready to go you know it's always hard to tell when these things are ready to start rolling and <laughs> usually not when i'm ready i'm it's usually ready before me that's how it goes so here we are we're at the woman entrepreneur pajama party interview series and um i have my calming tea right here so i'm Ooh. all getting ready for bed as soon as we get all done my little fruity cup ah. and uh we'll be ready to like do a little snooze after we get done here. So um, I want everybody to just be relaxed and with us in our pajamas, get up in your bed and um, join us in our interview and we'll make you feel so much better after you get done listening because Mylanda is going to share with us some of her secrets to success. Whoa, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So anyways, this is where women with the entrepreneur spirit, women who are aspiring to be entrepreneurs and seasoned women entrepreneurs, come together to share as a community, gaining inspiration, mentoring, and the tools we need to grow our business as we grow ourselves. Hey, yeah. I, it's a big job, you know. It's a very. <laughs> Plus, take care of kids. <laughs> exactly. I, so you don't have to spend any time getting dressed. It's such a big job. I am Cindy Cohen, a registered nurse for 26 years, an entrepreneur. And for the last 18, the owner of C to Your Health LLC, where we provide, um, what do we provide? Health coaching, <laughs> corporate wellness, and community health and wellness events. And in 2018, I founded the nonprofit organization, C to Your Health Women's Initiative, providing mentoring and leadership, build, leadership building for high school girls, like seniors, you know, because they're getting ready to decide what they're going to do when they get out of school aspiring and women who are just starting their business and seasoned entrepreneurs too so we help any woman and some you know a few guys too if you're <laughs> you ask <clears throat> about what they need to do to grow their business because women's needs are so much different than men's needs when it comes to well growing a business and just about everything else yeah, yeah. yeah each year we host the women entrepreneur summit in november and um, we're getting ready. We're coming right up on the on the uh, summit, you know, like in a few weeks. Yes. Yeah. So we're like very excited about it. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, what we learned by putting together the Women's Entrepreneur Summit was that November 19th is National Women's Entrepreneurship Day. So we have our own day. And in the United States, 39% of the businesses are owned by women which I was shocked to hear that it was so low. And then on the other hand, I was kind of shocked to hear that it was so high. And in St. Joseph County, Indiana, and in, in in South Bend, Indiana, and surrounding areas, the women entrepreneurs consist of 2% of the businesses and surrounding areas, 3%. So we really have some a lot of work we need to do here. And See to Your Health Women's Initiative aims to change this by providing women entrepreneurs entrepreneurship mentoring courses, women entrepreneur excellence certification, and the summit that's coming up in just about a week and a half. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to Wailanda. She's a woman entrepreneur and she has gone to the Women's Entrepreneur Summit. So she'll be sharing with us a little bit about her experience. So Wailanda, why don't you just take a few minutes and share a bit about yourself and your background. All right. Uh, my name is Wylanda Scott, and I'm the founder of Womenpreneurs Breaking Barriers. It is a retreat agency. I um, host quarterly retreats that educate, train, and inspire women to build their businesses and have uh, a getaway setting to where they can learn but still be relaxed and um, to network and um also have uh, continuous learning uh, with coaching, uh, membership, and also um, being able to do online courses for those who are busy and can't uh, come to settings like going to a college setting. They can still get an online course and do it at their own convenience to grow. Um, I believe in self-development. I'm also a ordained minister. Um, that's been uh, for over ooh, nine, nine, 12 years of being ordered in. <laughs> Somewhere in that time uh, with my pastor, my pastor is Monterey Reverend Brian L. Bacon. Um, I'm a member of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Uh, he makes sure that you are uh, busy. <laughs> so you, 
you lose time of how long you've been in the field. It seemed like for hundreds of years, but I'm grateful for it because that's where I learned my um, my calling, which is teaching. So that's what I love to do is teach and um, and also talk to women. So it, um, that's where I got my um, feet wet is in the ministry and also able to use my spiritual gifts of encouragement and uplifting and giving. Uh, so um, I've been in leadership and management for over 29 years. I dabbled in um, the health field for 12. That's because my grandmother paid for it. I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, even though I hated it, I loved it because I was still able to use my gift of the caring part, um, mm -hmm. but I uh, worked as a district manager, uh, uh, assistant manager, a co-manager, every manager there was, I worked as that manager. Uh, so uh, that's where I got my experience. I also got my education through Bethel and also Davenport um, College. Uh, and both of them changed to universities, so. Right, <laughs> um, yeah, they did. Both, yeah, both universities, um, so for the, I was just blessed to be able to be educated, uh, be trained, and then also have that spiritual backing to help me. So you are in our mentoring program, so I know you very well. So how long have you owned your own business? Is this your first one or have you had other ones before this? Can you just kind of tell us where you are in your journey? Wow, a long journey. <laughs> <laughs> I had, um, this is not my first business. Uh, this is my first business that I'm doing in my passion. Um, mm -hmm. I had a home health care business before home health care um, actually came. Mine was private, and I uh, worked that for eight years. Um, and it was very, uh, very good uh, job, well, business, but I came sick. And because it wasn't my passion, there was no off to go back to do it. So that's how I ended up entering into retail. Um, and, but I've been in this business, um, working with, uh, building retreats and, um, educating women. It's been a year now. Um, but I have not been for this last year because of COVID. I actually have not been doing retreats. I've been doing, um, using other skills that I have to do. So that's why it was still a little, you know, sad. Oh, I'm not doing what I wanted to do, but looking for the new year and as things change, being able to go into it more fully. Well, we can all do better at that pivot, that new pivot skill, right? Oh, yes. Exactly. That's a nice way to put it, but I love it too. It's always, you know, as an entrepreneur, we're always like reinventing ourselves and reinventing uh, the products and services that we offer. And, you know, one of the great things about being an entrepreneur is you have, hopefully you have the personality that's flexible enough to yeah. be able to make those changes and it isn't too, you know, terribly stressful for you. Oh, yes. So uh, during the mentoring sessions that, you know, I have about Tana with our, the women that I mentor, people are like always asking me, you know, how does someone find their passion? I mean, that really seems to be like a big question where people just aren't sure kind of what they're passionate about. So how did you decide that this was your passion? Like what, what was your aha moment? Oh gosh, it was through a lot of trial and error <laughs> and opportunities. <laughs> right. Um, because passion is, I, I, I tell everybody because we're women, we're multitaskers. So um, we could do about everything. Um, we can even fix a car. If we put our mind to it, yeah. <laughs> We can build the building, <laughs> right? You know, do whatever so, we need to do, right? Yes, and um, so we would think that we're good at everything, and um, I was just blessed to be able to multitask. So there was a lot of stuff that I did, but I didn't have that connection to it. And um, my aha moment was when um, I got the opportunity uh, at our ministry to host the uh, the women's. Uh, women's ministry mm -hmm. and it was like awesome and uh, getting all that together meeting with the women um directing them on how they wanted to go and then being the keynote speaker i was like this is it this is what i want to do and um and i sat down i wrote 
couple of things down to ask um, uh, but all the things that I was good at and I said what would I do if I wouldn't get paid and that was it so I discovered that is my passion to train and teach women um, in a um, in a gathering in a ceremony setting to where they can um, be relaxed because I feel when we're relaxed because we're always doing everything mm -hmm. that we need that relaxed um, station away from the kids, away from the husband, away from world, oh, yeah. just to learn. And we're it's full of distractions. There's a ton of them. Oh yes. So the studies show that 38 percent of businesses worldwide are owned by women. They other studies show that women who utilize mentoring breaks down the barriers that are faced by these women, such as lack of access to technology and networks finance and other business upscaling tools that they need to accelerate their business. And when they, when women use mentors, it actually improves their business success by 33%, which yeah. is really a lot. Yeah. And that's what we're doing here today um, on the show is we're, we're actually providing mentoring for our viewers because yeah. you are sharing your experience. So as our mentor, so now you're our mentor. Okay. <laughs> In your business journey, what advice helped you the most and who did you get it from? Oh, the best advice that I got. <laughs> and I will stand on it and it's in everything that I do. Um, Donald Trovich, he was my uh, mentor at uh, Walmart when I was first going into the management uh, program. Mm -hmm. And I never did retail. And I would back down on opportunities. I knew I knew how to do it, but I didn't feel comfortable because I was around a whole bunch of men. And, the, you know, the atmosphere just wasn't there. And he right. put me to the side and he said, no one, will, no one will know that you're great unless you show them. Wow. And he was like, I, like that. I need you to hurry up and show them because I'm tired of working for these stupids. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What great advice. And I, I use that in everything, you know, first being called into the ministry. No one will know that you're great, that you're called until you show it. And, you know, and that's what I, I start teaching my kids and whoever I come in, that's the first thing that I tell them. But nobody will know that you're great until you show it. You know, I think the first people we mentor are our children. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I, use, I also use a lot of business analogies centered around my family life. Yes. <laughs> I think we learn, a lot of great, we learn a lot of great lessons there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and every bit of everything that ever happens to you and what you learn is where you're sitting right now. Yes. So everything that's happened, happened to get get you wherever you are so it's really it's not always a bad thing all those bad things sometimes yeah. good things come out of it <laughs> so what advice would you give um women who are starting a business like what did you what did you kind of wish you knew before you kind of jumped in the back end <laughs> no but <laughs> the back end of it okay so what do you mean so what do you mean by that um because working in management and in the business field, um, always being in leadership, I was working and I was doing the front end of it. So I was being able to manage, make sure that things were getting done, um, making sure that the schedule was uh, put together, making sure that uh, people were having what they needed to do their job. But when I came into business for myself, I had to do the back end part of it. And that was the marketing, um, the uh, sales page, the, because I and I had to learn virtual. So all of the things that were already um, put together for me, and all I had to do was go in and make sure it ran. Now I had to put it together. And so um, yeah, that's you, true. <laughs> and so when you uh, you come in. You, you're coming in with that, what you go and learn from school, you know, the management and getting your team together and all this, but not knowing how to set up your email marketing and um, how to set up your sales page, um, how to uh, even set up your videos, setting up the script, set, you know, and all of this, getting the right um, phone system that's for you, make sure that 
Should you be a sole proprietor or should right. you be an LLC? Should you be a single LLC? All that you had to sit, it was like overwhelming. And I get a lot of questions that say, um, I don't know where to start. And, mm -hmm. and people tell you, well, just start. Okay, yeah, you know, that's good to say at a certain extent. When you say just start, you got to finish the sitting, the sentence. Right. You got to say, just start by research, you know, start by this, you know, because that was the advice I got. Just start. And so I just started. I got a, uh, went online and I pulled up a business checklist and it said, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I did all that. And then I'm sitting in this building and I'm looking at this checklist and I'm like, now what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, okay, wait a minute. There's more. You now know, you need someone to show you what to do. Yes. And it was like, okay, that's where, um, cause you were talking about earlier about the numbers of businesses of women. Mm -hmm. And, um, what I've discovered is that there's a lot of women out there who's starting businesses, but they're, uh, shutting down because of that, not knowing the back end part. So right. when they go to a challenge, they give up easily instead of having someone to come in and say, hey, wait a minute, you're just missing uh, uh, an email sequence. <laughs> you're, just right. missing, you're just missing a blog and making sure that you got affiliate links and make sure. So um, that back end part is make sure you learn the back end um, before you even get out there, before you, um, that's the research you should begin with when they say just start. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, so much is going on these days, you know, it's, I don't even need to list it. There's a huge list happening. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard not to be distracted, even for accomplished, you know, women entrepreneurs. And oh yeah. so what would you say are just like one or two key activities that you would recommend entrepreneurs to invest their time in? So Ooh. if I could only do like one or two things every day, like how, what do you think would be the most important? The, um, the most important is goal setting, uh, mm -hmm. setting your day, um, setting your week, and then setting your month. Uh, you begin with uh, setting your day the, the night before, setting your week the weekend before, and setting your month the beginning of the month. Um, and then putting in, in prioritizing it, uh, what is the most important. I, I always ask the question, if I get this done, how will it build my business? Will it get me customers? Will it, um, you know, uh, will it build my sales? Mm -hmm. What would what would this this priority do for me? And then I do that down the list, and I um, and I go one, two, three, four, and because I use the eighty twenty rule and the twenty eighty rule, so the eighty percent of what you write down of all what you got to do, only twenty percent of it is that what you're going to get done. So once you write down everything, then you go back and you get that 20% and you number it so that you mm -hmm. can see what it is that you need to get down. Because a lot of stuff that we write down is really the multitasking <laughs> skills that we're good at, but we don't really need to touch. And it's not benefiting us in any kind of way. And um, so make sure that you prior prioritizing yourself, doing that goal setting. And then secondly, um, making sure that you uh, have me time. And um, and that meantime is consists of three things: is one making sure that you're self developing, um, two mm -hmm. that you're getting sp spiritually developed, um, listening to a worship time where you just sit back and just um, listen to the word or mm -hmm. um, whatever spiritual direction you take. But that meditation time to where you could just get out of self <laughs> and right. just be empty and let, um, let it be filled by spiritual. And then the thirdly is to um, enjoy what you're doing. Um, enjoying the finances that you receive. If it is just going out and getting a donut and a cup of coffee, that is money you earn. <laughs> That's true. To do that. And those three things will keep you ahead and the and the last thing is to make sure that you have a mentor um a coach that uh, i don't care how much you know and how long you've been doing it or 
if you can't afford it, there is people out here that will coach for free, you know, to a certain extent to get you to where you're able to um, get uh, financially stable and then come in and start paying for them. Uh, but getting a coach, a mentor that can help you when you get to the challenge, because a challenge will end up into fear and fear will end up to stopping you to where you want to go. Oh, that's great advice. That's pretty power packed, I have to say. You know, I've been thinking about that 80-20 rule that you just talked about. And, you know, that makes sense. So if you have a, a list of 10 things you need to do, so on the list of 10 things, you would only get two done. Yeah. So if you have a list of 20 things, you only get four done. Yeah. So that makes sense because, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm kind of afraid to make to-do lists. <laughs> Because then it's like a, it's like a little bit overwhelming, and then I think, oh, okay. So I once went to a seminar where our, went, where they said, well, make your big list, but just pick like four things you're going to get done on that day, and just concentrate on those four things. And so it goes right along with what you're saying. I mean, I yeah. think it makes a lot of sense to me because I think when women, we, you know, we start out with a nice list and we think, oh, we're going to get these two or four things done. And then everything else happens on top of it. Yes. And so it, it's, it's a little discouraging. So I think that 80, 20 rule, it's like a good, it's a nice rule of thumb. Thanks for sharing that with us. No problem. Thank you, thank you. So the Women Entrepreneurs Summit is just right around the corner. It's just like 10 days away. Yeah. Now. I know it's very exciting. We're very excited about it. And we found during our research, when we set up our nonprofit organization, that women business fail um, at the rate of 70%. So a yeah. lot of women's business fail. Within the first year, it's even higher. I think it's like 85%. And then as you go the second year and the third year, and by the fourth year, that's pretty much 70% have failed. And when you look at the research course, there's a million reasons why women business fail. But there's, there's really just a few main ones that keep getting like reported over and over. So one of them is lack of mentoring, which we yeah. have talked about and role models. It's hard to find a role model because there's not a lot of very, <clears throat> there's not a lot of women maybe where you live. There's not a lot where I live that are successful women entrepreneurs. I have more experience than you. Um, lack of resources are not knowing where to find them and also lack of confidence. You know, fear is like a huge thing. So at the summit, we talk about mostly those things. We have 19 speakers come and address those areas. So I know you attended the Women's Entrepreneur Summit last year. And um, do you mind sharing with us a minute your thoughts about the summit and how maybe it helped you with your business? Yes, I actually uh, attend all three years. Oh, you did? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and each year it got um, better and better. Um, and it's just because of the experience, you know, going um so, well, the first two years, because we got the third year coming, I'll be attending. Right. <laughs> you feel um, like you've already attended. We've yes. <laughs> um, but uh, my experience was the, uh, the knowledge, the wisdom that was shared in the, from each speaker that came up. And um, they wasn't afraid to share the knowledge and wisdom. They were open. Um, and what they gave you, you didn't have to go search, you know, around and say, well, maybe that's what they said or maybe not. It was clear. Um, and it, when you left, you were able to take what they um, spoke to you and use it in your business. Um, and also the networking. I met so many women um, from the two years that, um, that I was able to call uh, to be able to uh, build friendships and also work uh, friendships with them too. Um, also had an opportunity to go out for lunch with you know, your group, a few of them and just talk and pick okay. their brains and see where they're going. So um, it's, that's what, as you were saying, all the things that were lacking, that, that part right there was given to us um, all in one swoop, <laughs> you know, and um, the first one, I was like, oh, this is too long. But <laughs> I had just quit my job and was working 18 hours or something. Yeah. So when, But the second one, I was well rested and I also had a chance to be a part of it. 
um, because of being in the uh, first source uh, mentorship program. So um, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and it has really been a help. Um, and I always encouraging other women, hey, you need to get in this program. You know, if you're serious about, you know, doing your business, get in this program because you're going to receive what you need um, to where you can be able to be successful. Um, but that's that's what I got out of the summit and what I used, um, especially the mentorship and the, um, the fellowship um, of the women. Well, that's so great. That's really part of our philosophy is to build a women entrepreneur community yeah. where we can lean on each other's strengths and learn from each other and collaborate and pivot and yeah. Yeah. problem solve and support and, you know, cry on each other's shoulders, be depressed, get better, be happy. I mean, it's really been an amazing experience for us to really put this the whole thing together. And it's so wonderful to see because I think for a lot of women entrepreneurs, we think we're all by ourselves. You know, we think it's just, it's just me. Everything relies on me. No one can help me. And even if they could help me, they wouldn't. Yeah. No one ever helps me. You know, everyone lets me down. They yeah. don't do it right. I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole dialogue that goes with that. But really I find that individually women really, care about each other and we really the people who are more experienced want to help the people who are yeah. less experienced and we want to nurture them along and bring them along and and you know a lot of times we think oh well we have to go get a big expert i mean i love the i love our summit because we do have experts that come we have yeah. um, women leaders who are great resources to our women entrepreneurs who attend the summit but we also have 10 women entrepreneurs that are down in the trenches, you know, working their business and sharing what they know. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and so it's just, it's such a great experience. And the networking is so great too. Yeah. And I know this year we're doing the summit virtually and a lot of people are worried about that. I've had some women come to me and said, but you know, the networking part is so amazing. <laughs> like how, do we, you know, how do we foster that as a virtual event? And so I'm like, really, I was really concerned about that initially, but now I'm like super excited yeah. because we figured, we found a platform that'll help us network with each other. And the one that we're using is hop in, like jump, hopin.to. And they give you inside of a platform really close to a real life experience. They, uh, you have like, you go in through a lobby and you have the main stage, which will have all the speakers. And they, um, after they play once, they'll all be recorded. So you can hop into any, you know, presentation you like. There's also exhibit spaces there. So you can visit each exhibit space. And then they actually have a networking platform. It's sort of like speed dating. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so, or someone said like a blind date, you know, like speed dating with a blind date element, because <laughs> what the platform does is it actually, when you sign up for networking, it matches the people together that are signed up and kind of moves you around the platform and you get like three minutes with each person. So uh -huh. you, it's really hard to like visualize if you haven't been involved, but, but trust me, it's really amazing. I mean, I'm like super excited about it. We wouldn't even be doing it if we couldn't do the networking piece. Yeah. Because yeah. That's really the part that we really love that everyone leaves and they get to meet someone or 20 or 30 people and they also can make connections with them later, you know, after the event also. And then also, since we have 19 speakers, if you just learned one thing from each speaker, you will leave with 19 new ideas of yeah. things that you can do. So we're like really excited and the speakers encourage you to, you know, connect with them. And this year we have a beautiful workbook and we have extra uh, like bonus gifts for you. We can have free coaching and free handouts and just a lot more uh, material that we're giving out. And we also see to your health is starting a new initiative when we move forward and we're giving out free memberships for that. So we have a lot more flexibility since we're not doing it in person. Yeah. So um, if you're worried about doing it as an event, don't worry about it. And also people are worried maybe that day is not good for them, November 19th. But you know what? As long as you're registered by November 19th, you'll get 30 day access to the event. So in other words, any day after that until December 20th, 
you can get back on there and visit the booth spaces and visit the um, speakers yeah. um, presentation. So I, it's so much better because you know what? Our presentations are 10 minutes long. They go so fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you almost need a rewind. Yeah. I mean, I always ask because I'm busy, you know, organizing the conference. I ask people, did you take notes? And everyone's just like, notes. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just like a lot. It's a lot. But yeah. that's what we want it to be. We want you to have that exposure of a lot because people come in and they're so like low and disheartened because they feel like they just don't. It's just not going anywhere for them. Yeah. When you leave, you're like excited because of all these new things that have been introduced to you. So, yeah, yeah. So, how about how's the best way to reach you? And also, like, how can we help you in your journey? So, tell us what how we can help you and what's the best way to get a hold of you. Um, how you can help me is we continue on. Um, <laughs> my phone is hopping tonight. Oh, oh here wouldn't funny. even ring. Oh, <laughs> like, that, that could be like our little times up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, hopping, hopping. Um, what you can continue to uh, do for me is just to continue on on what you're doing, uh, making sure that um, women have that resource to reach out and uh, be a part, uh, and just in, for the encouraging of, about all the things that people are worried about. It's a new age, a new time of how we're doing anything. And you won't know if it doesn't work for you unless you try it. So we encourage you to sign up and um, try this. Uh, it's being set up and get more um, information. Um, but, and how I can be reached is at womenbb110 at gmail.com. Or you can call for a free talk with me, just to talk. Uh, 1-269-252-4145. Also, don't you have like an interview? What is that thing you do where you help people an, an assessment? Kind of like, you know, I'm a nurse, so I think it's like a medical assessment. But an <laughs> assessment where they can kind of think about where they are in their business. Don't you yeah, have, have something like that? Yeah, I have an intake form. Um, so when uh, someone calls and we're talking, they... Um, may say I don't know where I want to go or I don't know what to niche is. I just send them an intake form so they can see what direction that they're going um, and even deciding if because uh, a lot of people um, starting a business may not be where they want to begin. They may want to work for someone. Uh, so there's a lot of home-based businesses that you can start mm -hmm. uh, and you're working for people. Um, working as a medical assistant or um, as a uh, or what they call a uh, Facebook social media manager. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of business. You can still be a home-based business, but still be working for someone because uh, a lot of people are afraid to, you know, own, say I'm owning, owning, have to do. Um, so that's basically what I do. Well, great. Thanks. Well, I think we're about it's about time to wrap this up. So we had our little tone there already. <laughs> so thanks for this is a good idea. Thanks for showing for joining us tonight and sharing your business tips, yes, insights, absolutely. and courageous acts because it takes <laughs> a lot of courage to be a woman entrepreneur. Oh yeah. And, and thank you all for joining us and taking the time to work in your business, not just on your business. Yes. Sincere Health Women Initiative is a 501c3 a nonprofit organization supporting women entrepreneurs in our community by providing women entrepreneur mentoring to high school girls, women in college, and women from low income neighborhoods. This year on November 19th, which is just a few days away now, the Women's Entrepreneur Summit is gonna be virtual, making all the great education and training available and networking anywhere in the world that you can speak English, Yes. And to make it even better, after you register, remember, you'll be able to see the 19 speakers and 20 exhibitors from November 20th to December 20th for a whole full 30 days. Okay. To get involved, we always like to invite people to learn more about the summit, our organization to volunteer. We love volunteers. And to make a, or and to make a donation to our scholarship program. We invite you to go to our website, 
which is www. C like the letter C two the number two Y H W I like C to your health women's initiative but the initials dot org and you can pick up the summit at www dot women's like more than one women's entrepreneur summit dot org we look forward to seeing you at the summit this year and until next time stay healthy stay connected and stay you. Yay! Yay!